Hello and welcome back to episode 6 of Highway to PowerShell, a series where we cover a few minutes of PowerShell in each episode. In episode 5, we had a look at how we can create strings. We compared the difference between using single quotes and double quotes. And we learned how to combine text and values to build strings with more dynamic content. In this episode, we're going to look at how we can modify strings once they are created. But first, a message from our sponsor. Scriptrunner, the number one for PowerShell management, offers a free PowerShell poster for your office wall covering the PowerShell basics and the most important commands. Since you're here to learn PowerShell, this poster might be a great resource for you. If you want one, follow the link in the description below. Now, let's dive into the terminal. Once a string is created, there are a few methods on the string object that can be used to modify the string. We can find them all by piping a string to the command getMember. Just like we've seen before, getMember will output the type name of the object it received and then a table listing all the properties and methods on that object. As you can see here, a string has a whole long list of methods. I'm going to go through and show examples of the one I find the most useful. First, we have a few methods that can be used to check the contents of a string. We can check if a string starts with, ends with, or contains a certain thing. Let's check if our string starts with the word power. PowerShell is normally not case sensitive, but all these methods are actually not part of PowerShell itself, but part of the underlying .NET framework, which is case sensitive. So when we're using .NET methods, we have to adhere to the .NET case sensitivity, meaning that checking if the string starts with the word power with a lowercase p will return false instead. We can also check if a string ends with a certain thing. For example, ends with, in this case, a period. Or if a string contains a certain word, in this case, the word create. If a string contains a word, the method index of will tell us where in the string the first occurrence of that word starts. In this case, on position 14. If there are more than one occurrence in the string, we can use last index of to find the last occurrence. Since they both return the index of 14 in this case, we know that the word great only occurs once. If we want to sort strings alphabetically, we can use the method compare to to determine the sorting order. Let's compare the word banana to the word orange. A negative one means that banana should be sorted before orange when sorting alphabetically. If we instead compare banana to an apple, it gives us a positive one, meaning that banana should be sorted after apple. Now, what happens if we compare banana to banana, or two identical strings? Well, that will just give us a zero. Now, let's look at a few methods that we can use to actually modify strings. First, we have the method trim. Used without any parameters, it will remove any white space characters from the beginning and the end of a string. To demonstrate this, let's use the string formatting from episode 5, to create a string that starts with a few spaces and ends with a line break. To make it more clear, we will surround the strings with some pipe characters. So just like in episode 5, we create a string with our pipe characters surrounding the placeholder where we want our string to be inserted. Then we use the format operator dash f to insert a string that starts with spaces and ends with a line break, followed by a tab. Here we use the special escape sequences of backtick n and backtick t to create break and tab characters. It's now clear and easy to see that our string contains unwanted white space characters. This can often be the case when we, for example, import text from a spreadsheet, CSV file, or some external source. To remove all white spaces, both from the beginning and the end of the string, we can just call the method trim without any parameters. As you can see, now I only got the word bandana without any spaces either in the beginning or the end of the string. We can also trim custom characters by using them as parameters to trim. It's important to remember that trim will trim all occurrences of each character given independent of their order. So here we can see I trim NA, but it will actually trim A and A because it will trim all Ns and all As from both the beginning and end of the string. To look at another example, Let's try to trim B, N, and A. This time, we only got the D left, since it will remove any B, N, or A from both ends of the string. 
If we only want to trim the start or end of a string, there are methods called trim start and trim end, which will solve that for us. Next up, we'll try to remove a word from a string. Earlier, we found out that the word great started at index 14. By using the method remove and giving it 14, it will remove anything at position 14 and forward in the string. Now I only get back the result of partial is. We can also remove a certain amount of characters by using two numbers with remove. This will only remove the gr from great. We can also do the opposite by using the method substring. This will only keep the characters from index 14 and forward. And just like with remove, we can give it a length of two and we will only keep the two characters starting at position 14. There are also two methods to change the case of the string. These are called to upper and to lower. The last two methods we're going to look at are the split and replace methods. Split will split the string on a separator and create multiple strings. This can, for example, be useful when we want to count words by splitting a space. This can also be useful when splitting, for example, a username from a domain, like this. If we only want to keep one of the values, we can use an index of one to only get the second value, like this. Partial also has a handy feature where we can assign the output to several vari variables. In this example, we're going to assign the first value to the variable domain and all the remaining values to the value username. The first value will be stored in domain and the second value will be stored in username. Replace will, just like you would expect, replace part of a string. Note that none of these methods actually change the original string in dollar $string. It only outputs modified copies of the string. If you want them to modify the original string, I simply need to reassign a new value to my variable dollar string. And now dollar string has a new value. There are even more methods we can use on a string, but these are the ones that I find the most useful. When we're using methods in PowerShell, we must always remember to follow the method name with a parenthesis. If we forget that, PowerShell will instead return the definition of the method instead of actually running the method. This can sometimes come in very handy if I want to hint on how to use the method. We can easily see here that there are two definitions of the method substring. The first one takes just one integer as a parameter, and that is the start index. The second definition takes two integers, a start index and a length. Before we summarize, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and please leave a comment. It makes me so happy every time. To summarize, there are a lot of methods that we can use on the string object. We find them all by piping a string to the command get member. All these methods are features of .NET and not specific to PowerShell. They are all case sensitive by default and none of them actually modify our input string. They only return modified copies of the string. In the next episode, we're going to look at PowerShell specific techniques to modify strings instead. Stay tuned and until then, keep automating.